Today we're going to have a quick listen to Major Brian Shaw of the United States Air Force, former SR-71 pilot, retelling a few stories from back in the day and in doing so, Brian is going to absolutely annihilate the globe theory. We're then going to have a look at the globe distance to the horizon calculator and then we're going to compare the observations that Brian Shaw was seeing, measure the distance, compare it to the distance of the horizon calculator, i.e. the globe mathematics, a big fail, I can tell you, and then we're going to use Google Earth to try and recreate Major Brian Shaw's observation, testing Google Earth and testing the globe at the same time, and it's a big double whammy fail, I can tell you as the heights we have to go to recreate Brian Shaw's observations in his SR-71 is ridiculous. But let's have a quick listen to Brian first. Uh, when Walter and I were doing a training mission around the United States, we just were building up hours and time, and we take off out of Beale, hit a tanker in Idaho, rip on up to uh, Montana, zip across Denver, hang a right turn in Albuquerque, out over Los Angeles, up to Seattle, back into Sacramento, two hours, 21 minutes. And you just do that for, and then you do it backwards, and you hit a tanker or two. It was just, just to gain crew coordination, get build your hours. We're on our last training mission. We're over Tucson. I can see downtown L.A. from Tucson. We're at 89,000 feet. I can see the whole western United States bathed in a warm October fall glow. I can see the chain of Rocky Mountains from Canada to New Mexico. I can, I can just see the most beautiful picture laid at my feet in the... Fantastic, Brian. Thank you. And no doubt it was incredibly flat, my dear man, if you were seeing that far. So, Brian, at 89,000 feet, was seeing the whole western side of the United States. He was 89,000 feet above Tucson. He could see the whole of the western side of the United States. He could see downtown LA. He could see the Rocky Mountains in Canada coming all the way down to New Mexico. Incredible! Let's just have a look on a map, just to give you some idea. Two sets. So here's a map of the western United States. Tucson is right at the bottom there, below Felix. And of course our pilot, was Brian, was 89,000 feet above Tucson. And strangely enough, he was seeing the whole of the United States. Not only that, he was seeing the Rockies come down from Canada, all the way down to New Mexico. <laughs> you kind of gave the game away there, Brian, as we're about to see. Okay, over at the distance to the horizon calculator. Observer height, 89,000 feet. Calculate the distance. We get a distance to the horizon of 365.9 miles. Already, anyone who looked at that map just now can see there's an obvious problem. Right, let's get some idea of distance here. I'm going to be quite kind to the globe believers. I'm not going to measure all the way to the Rockies inside of Canada. I'm going to measure to the border. Just to be fair here. I don't want to crush your, your globe too much. So to give us some idea of distance. Let's say pro approximately 1,100 miles to the Rockies on the US Canadian border, okay? It's actually a lot further. If I was to include the whole Rockies, we'd be looking in the region of 1500 miles. But we'll give the Globies a, ch a sort of fighting chance here. Not that their reality is real whatsoever, it's pantomime, as we've just seen. So we've got that, 1100 miles. This SR-71 pilot was seen at an absolute minimum from 89,000 feet. But the Globe mathematics tell him and us, the, the horizon, i.e. the cutoff point, should have been just over 300, was it 369 miles, was it? Let me just double check. 365.9 miles. So the, the horizon on the globe model from an observation height of 89,000 feet should be 365 miles away, i.e. the cutoff point. But strangely enough, Brian is seeing another seven if we want to include the Canadian Rockies, another 1,200 miles. <laughs> oh dear. 
This only happens when you, you know, when it's a lie. You wouldn't have these problems if the globe was fundamentally true. So let's go on Google Earth now before we finish and let's see how high we have to get before we can actually see what Brian, the SR-71 pilot, stroke globe knockout artist, could see. Let's have a look. Two secs. Okay, we're on Google Earth. You can see Tucson just at the bottom on the left, just to the left of the Google logo there. Okay. And look up at the top. Obviously, this is what we're interested in to see how far we can see. So we've located Tucson. I'm just going to bring it down a bit now. So in theory, we're above it. Okay. So let's just slide that down. Being quite generous there. So I think it's fair to say we're above Tucson. Now looking at the globe horizon, we've got Oregon, Idaho. We still can't even see Washington State yet. And at the moment, my altitude is not 89,000 feet. I'm 324 kilometers up so far, which is what? 200 miles up, is it? Near enough. And I still can't even see Washington State, yet alone Canada, where the Rocky Mountains are. So let's, let's go a bit higher. Right, Washington's just popped into view there, which is just before the Canadian border. So what height am I? 300 and 73 kilometers up and I still can't see Canada that's behind the ball but strangely enough the SR-71 pilot could see all this and more from 89,000 feet but according to Google Earth I have to literally go into space at the moment I'm 373 kilometers up and I still can't see what the SR-71 pilot could see you got to love the SR-71. What a cracking globe knockout artist it is. And of course, the observations of the SR-71 pilot are only possible if the Earth is a level plane. We've seen how ridiculous the observations are on a ball. They don't work. The SR-71 literally has to go to space. What was it? Over 300, I think it was 370 kilometers up, and it still couldn't see all the things the SR-71 pilot was seeing from 89,000 feet. It just proves how silly the globe is. Google Earth mucked in and put the boot in on the globe there. So we thank you guys, the SR-71 pilot and Google Earth, for highlighting the absurdity of the globe theory. Thank you.